and the, and the spirit of Bendigo. Have you found any gold on this trip and during the pre-season? <laughs> Oh, there's been, there's been plenty of gold, hopefully more for the community than necessarily for our team as such. Um, I just think it's great after a three year absence from community camps in person that we can get back out into um, you know, really heartland Victoria and, and out to, to the people again. And you know, the players have, have thoroughly enjoyed the last couple of days getting back out and it's been a really tough time for a whole range of people over the last three years. Um, but I think it's served as a reminder just how important football is to local communities and participation levels in, in Bendigo and Central Vic more broadly, it's been really positive and I think everyone's missed footy and, and hopefully missed having AFL footballers back up in the region. So it's been great for us and, and hopefully a big boost for the community too. The facilities here look fantastic. What do you guys get out of changing up the environment, changing the things and then also coming out into the facilities? Well, look at the surface of this um, you know, Queen Elizabeth Oval, it's um, absolutely first class and you know, it's, a, it's a credit to, to everyone involved to get the, the surface like this and um, you know, it's a big part of what the AFL do, the, the helping to invest in, in community facilities and um, whether that be ovals themselves or, or other uh, facilities as well. That's, participation in football is growing so quickly that you know, we need facilities to be able to, to use. So, a quality facility like this, we didn't we didn't miss anything today. It's um, the surface is just as good as it is at the hangar. So um, credit to all involved. Getting closer to picking a captain. What's the, the process looking like from here? Oh, we've we've said all along that Dyson Heppel is our captain, um, and and that will remain um, up until you know we go through our process. And you know I suspect that there's a, a strong likelihood that that'll still be the case, um, but. I think we've been on record that we'll work through our process and um, I'll have a lot of ongoing discussions with Dyson, um, but we'll finalise our process before we play the Gold Coast in some unofficial match sim and, uh, and then we'll be able to be in a position to announce that. But you know, I, I couldn't be more impressed with Dyson Heppel, I've admired him from afar for a long period of time uh, and he's led this club through quite a challenging period um, in his career, so he's been super impressive. and. You know, if he wants to continue as captain, then I suspect that's what will happen. So when you talk about the process, what's going on? Well, we, we've got an opportunity to, to reset the identity of our football team uh, on field and, and what we look for and, and, and what we want to look like as a team. So we work through that process first in terms of you know, the way we want to play and, and then we, we look to the players to identify the, the players that best personify what that looks like. So. Uh, we're at the pointy end of that process and we should be able to announce that in the next week or two. <laughs> yeah, it's not probably not too dissimilar to everyone else, you know, we want to be really balanced in all parts of the game and, um, you know, there's, we've worked on all areas and a lot of people have asked me what we need to work on specifically and the easy answer is, you know, everything. So. It's, um, you know, we're not going to get too specific as to what we're working on at the micro level, but we've just got all facets of the game that we've got to improve in. Uh, not necessarily. I think there are, there are a heap of opportunities for us in terms of um, you know, setting the scene for what we want to look like going forward and I mean yeah, potentially there's an opportunity to, to refresh a few things but, but in terms of our, our leadership as I said I, I've come in with a really open mind and uh, working with the, you know, Josh Marnie, Dan McPherson, the rest of our coaching group you know, we've just been so impressed with our senior players and the way they've led this pre-season and um, we've got a really good crop of young guys coming through so the players will clearly have a big input into that but but as I said, if, um, from what I've seen, if, if Dyson wants to captain his football club, he will. Springer's fitness always gets a lot of attention. Is he where he should be? Jake's been, uh, from my understanding anyway, he played a fair bit of last year with a fair bit of groin soreness. And when I look at Jake Stringer, he is a strength power athlete and, and someone that, you know, when coaching against him previously, he's always someone you're worried about. And, I've always been concerned from an opposition perspective that it's Jake's um, power and impact in games 
that are his real weapon. So our focus with Jake has been first and foremost to get him injury free and to get him pain free. Um, so that's been our number one focus through the pre-season. Now he's at that stage which he is pain free, our focus has been on, on building his strength and power. So when you design any individual training program, you, you have to weigh up you know, um, what you prioritise and we prioritise his strength and power and that's, that's the type of player we want him to be. Uh, so for those who think he's, you know, who are wanting to be, you know, a, you know, a, a marathon runner or, or an elite, you know, transitional player, I don't think that's what Jake's strength is. But his strength is um, something that very few players in the competition have got. So that that will be our focus, and we'll play him in a style that suits that. Um, yeah, again, uh, Jai, Jai's been really, really impressive. He played back half of the year under significant duress with a, with a shoulder injury. So he had that um, repaired in the off-season, which, which probably hampered his, his strength a little bit. Um, but he's done a power of work aerobically and he's really well conditioned. Uh, he's, a, he's a great athlete and uh, a pretty well-rounded footballer. So again, I knew a little bit about Jai Caldwell, but um, you know, I've, I've been really impressed you know, on the upside from what I thought I knew to, to what I actually know about Jai. So yeah, we're looking forward to a big season from him. Yeah, well, I mean, it's interesting when you talk about our young guys, it's uh, the vast majority of the group. You know, 21 of our players are, are um, you know, basically first to four years. So that's basically half the list are, are, are very young. And, you know, we probably all know the established senior players, but the, the guys in, that, are, that are coming through, um, you know, like Archie Perkins and, you know, a few others have just been, you know, really impressive. Uh, and it's taken a bit of time to get to know them. Um, but, yeah, I think that, that we have... Uh, the, the hot topic at the moment is leadership, and most clubs are talking about leadership. You know, and we'll we'll have a captain um, or captains for 2023. But we're doing as much work on what that um, succession looks like, and, and building that that next group coming through. And you now there's a group of 10 or 12 guys who have been really impressive in that space. Yeah, well, I mean, at AFL footy these days, there's going to be a lot of focus on all parts of the footy club. But what was really the, the, the big thing that enticed uh, me and, and uh, I was really enth enthusiastic about coming into this role was everyone at the club's been talking about a refocus on football. So for a long time, Essendon's had a, a, a fairly holistic focus on a, for a whole range of reasons. Uh, but for me, it's just been focused on footy. So things that are happening externally um, and that don't relate directly to footy are not uh, largely uh, my concern. It's just been a focus on the football department and, and having our coaches and players focused on, on field. And I think that's, that's what our fans want. Our fans, members, supporters, you know, they want to focus back on football. And people can live in the past and talk about stuff off field. We're just focused on what we want to do on it. Hopefully most of the year. Uh, I don't think AFL rules, well I know AFL rules don't allow that, but um, uh, Harley Reid did his, um, his weak experience, which you know a lot of the, the elite um, underage talent have. They all have experiences at AFL club and we're very fortunate to have Harley down. Um, very highly credentialed player already and you know, probably a little bit like Will Ashcroft, you know, Brisbane training with the Brisbane Lions, you know, one or two years before his draft year. He, Harley's like Will, a player who looks like he could play AFL football right now. So he's been really impressive, and um, it's been great to get in, get to know him a little bit better. And he's a quality person and um, someone who, hopefully, we're going to get um, to see play up close. Um, and. You know, whoever he plays for, he's going to have a real impact on the competition. You might have to finish last to get him. <laughs> That's not the plan. How's your player availability in the that first goal post trial you've got coming up? Pretty good. Yeah, we'll, we'll take um, upwards of 35 players up, up to play um, in that match sim. So, and we had a discussion with the Gold Coast yesterday just about how we're going to set that up. So, um, yeah, we'll take every available player up and, and I think it's a great opportunity for everyone on our list to play some 
you know, albeit a practice match, some, some AFL footy. So the young guys will all get an opportunity and yeah, I suspect it'll be at this stage upwards of 35 players, so pretty good. And you ruled out Jimmy Stewart anyone else who won't play? Yeah, Stewart, uh, you know, Guelphie's um, coming back from you know, pretty minor calf injury, so we won't risk him. He's done 100% of the load in pre-season. Um, Zach Reed won't won't go up, but he's on a slow build back up along with Nick Cox with some um, some back issues. But but they're progressing really well. But they're just not at the stage where we need to put them at risk. Stringer right to go for. Our stringer will be up on the Gold Coast. Yep, 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 hundred percent. What does that game look like? Extended six quarters type stuff. Hard to play six quarters, but we'll um we'll 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 um yeah we'll we'll get out there and and probably play. You know, two or three periods, and then sit down with the Gold Coast and reassess. But I think, from our perspective, our our uh, objective is to get some match play into the majority of our list. So we'll just um, work with the Gold Coast on what that looks like, and whether we play sort of four, five, six periods, we'll we'll assess after two or three. Teaming someone up with Dyson for a handover is that something you? I'm just really open-minded to, to what it looks like. I think if, um, you know, it's, I'm very new to the club. I'm, I've spent a lot of time with the playing group and, you know, every day pretty much since October. Um, and one thing I've repeatedly said, I've, I've got an open mind on just about everything. So um, I'm not you know, certain on what our structure will look like, um, but we'll assess all options and, and come up with what we think is best for our team. Same so is that Sam Durham? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, it's amazing to think that that he came in as a mid-season draft selection and you know has really impacted the, our team, but also the competition last year. And I think it's a great reminder to all, all the players out there who don't get drafted in November that you know there are other opportunities now you know, to play AFL football, whether that's through the, the SSP or the mid-season draft. And in our case, you know, two players in particular, Nick Martin and, and Sam Durham, have, have been overlooked in the draft and, and come in and had real impact. So they've had great pre-seasons, both of them, and um, you know, it's their first pre-season really at AFL level. So yeah, both have been very, very impressive. Thanks, guys. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's it's huge not just for um, football, but for the greater community. You know, the everyone did it tough over the last three years. Everyone's in different circumstances, but you know, previously working at the AFL, we were very very concerned about the bounce back from COVID and and participation levels right from Auskick through all of grassroots and community football. And um, it's just great to see a thriving. Um, regional football participation level and you know there, there was probably uh, some who could get comfortable with online community camps but you know I, I'm personally really strong getting back out into the community and, and, and taking football to regional areas so Bendigo have been an unbelievable host um, we've had a great time here and it's been really well organised and we look forward to coming back again next year.